Okay. So, yan. So, today, let's continue our discussion on Chapter 6, the introduction to organic chemistry, the other half. No? Last time, we were able to cover the history of organic chemistry. It started from the idea of vitalism. Uh, what tells uh, what vitalism is about? Ano siya? Ang sinasabi niya nun that organic matter cannot be created uh, without the help of the vital force. Now, in vital force, that is a unknown force, unknown force yon that helps in making organic compounds. No? And di daw yung kaya gawin sa laboratory. However, that idea was tested by Friedrich Buller. Sabi niya dun is, you can create organic compounds out of inorganic compounds. No? You just have to do correct uh, procedures. And since Ano, since vitalism was uh, disproved, no? May sabihin, fake yung ano, vitalism. Doon na lumawak yung understanding natin ng organic chemistry. As ano alam natin, by default, our atoms can come together to form molecules, no? And they can create multiple bonds, no? Uh, depending on their valency, no? So, carbon is tetravalent. That means it can form four bonds, no? As proven by Lewis structure. Uh, Lewis that symbol niya rin, no? So, may four valence electrons doon ready to be paired, no? Ng electron in order to create four bonds. Tapos, ano pa? Ayun lang. Yung trivalency for the nitrogen group. Okay? So, the divalency for the oxygen family and the monovalency for the halides. No? So, yeah. so, with those idea about valency, you can connect your atoms no? in a different manner, creating various uh, types of organic compounds. No? And then, last time, we were also able to cover that some atoms are grouped together to function as one. Tawag natin dun ay functional groups. No? So, those molecules, uh, those group of atoms have uh, a purpose, no? Uh, may common purpose sila sa isang molecule. Either they can create hydrogen bonds, no? They can be electron withdrawing groups, etc., etc. So, yung mga bagay na yun, that defines the entire molecule, no? So, those groups attached to your ano, organic compound, din define niya kung ano yung magiging characteristic ng molecule nyo ano yung magiging properties niya, and how will it behave, no? Okay. So, for the other half of our lesson sa lecture, we will focus more on the way that the atoms bond, no? So, especially punta tayo sa covalent bonding. Okay. So, it was around 1940s, no? Uh, 1914, no? Uh, before World War One nung ma-discover ni Gilbert Lewis yung idea ng covalent bonding. So, according to Gilbert Lewis, no, yung atoms natin may mga electrons yan, and in order for them to be stable, they have to share the electrons so they can uh, they can copy the electron configuration of the noble gas. No? For example, for hydrogen, ang noble gas na closest sa kanya would be helium, which requires two electrons. No? So for the hydrogen atoms to be ano, to be stable, they have to share the electron no? to make the molecular hydrogen or H2. So by sharing the electron, they both get stable. So this is the energy diagram of our uh, hydrogen atoms. And this is the internuclear distance on the x-axis. That means the distance between the two nuclei of the two hydrogen atoms here. And on the y-axis, we have the energy here. So the higher the energy, the more unstable it is. The lower the energy, the more stable it is, no? as stipulated by the law of thermodynamics. No? So kung titignan natin, if our two hydrogen atoms are distant, pag magkalayo sila, so... Approaching zero yung energy. However, ang gusto natin, according to thermodynamics, is kailangan lower yung energy. As much as possible, yung lowest energy yung kailangan ni achieve no? to maintain stability. Think of that as yung, for example, itong pencil ko. Kunwari, ito, zero energy yan. Kasi equal yung forces. No? 
equal yung upward force and the downward force no yung upward force that is my uh, force para hindi siya mahulog no the downward force is of course the force due to gravity so kunare steady yan diyan ang kanyang energy ay zero however ano sabi ng thermodynamics no according to thermodynamics the energy of systems must be negative for it to be stable so in a sense para ito maging stable i have to let it go kailangan ko siya bitawan until it reaches the equilibrium kapag binitang ko yung pencil mauhulog yan sa baba ganun din yung energy diagram natin no Kunwari, ito yung pencil mo. Pag binitawan mo yung pencil mo, mahuhulog yun sa baba. No? Wherein, dun siya mas stable. So, ganun din yung ating atoms. No? So, they have uh, electrons in which kapag nag-form sila ng bond, they will be stable. Okay? So, there will be an attraction between the two nuclei and the electron. Okay? Magsasama sila to form the covalent bond. However, the closer you, uh, the closer you push that atoms together, pag pinagdikit mo pa sila lalo, what will happen to the energy? It will increase exponentially. Bakit? No? Kasi pumapasok na yung repulsion forces. No? So, the closer you push the atoms together, the two nuclei become closer together. And that causes repulsion. No? Ang nuclei natin ay positively, in ch positively charged. Diba? So, pag nagdikit masyado yung nuclei, magre-repel sila. Kumbaga, in covalent bonding, there should be just an optimum distance for the two nuclei to balance out the forces, no? Uh, and that keeps the molecule stable, no? So, ano yung mga forces that keeps the bond at the optimal distance? So, it is the attractive forces between the nuclei and the electron, the repulsive forces between the two nuclei and the two electrons, no? So, kumbaga, all of those stuff must come in play in order to balance the forces out. No? Once, the balance, uh, once the forces are already balanced, you have your optimal, optimal distance for the bond. No? Okay. So, yun yung idea lang ng covalent bonding. No? So, magsasama yung dalawang atoms. They will share an electron at a certain distance para hindi magkaroon ng further repulsion sa kanilang subatomic particles. No? What we know about atoms is that yung protons, positive one yung charge niya. Electron, of course, negative one yung charge. No? The electrons that are used in bonding are what's called the valence electrons. No? Well, the core electrons are not used for uh, bonding, di ba? So yung mga outermost electrons, yun yung sinishare, binibigay, in order to, for them to be stable. Depending on the group number on the periodic table, you can have different charges, no? So, yun. Alam nyo na to yung mga valency, valency, no? Group 1, 1 electron. Group 2, 2 electron. Up to group 8, 8 electron, no? So, depending on the number of electron, they can either accept or uh, they can either accept or give electrons for them to be stable, no? So, yun lang yung idea dyan. And depending on their distance to the noble gas, no, meron tayong changes sa kanilang electronegativity. No? So what is electronegativity? Electronegativity is the tendency for the atom to pull electrons to its no Why? In order for it to be stable. No? So if you could still recall the trend for electronegativity, we know that fluorine is the most electronegative atom in the periodic table. And the trend are as follows. No? As you go to the right side of the periodic table, your electronegativity increases. Why? Because as you go towards the right of the periodic table, the atoms become closer to the noble gas. Hence, they will be... Uh, they will need more electrons. No? Parang mas mapupush sila kumuha ng electron kasi malapit na sila sa finish line, which is the noble gas. No? So that's why as you go to the right side of the periodic table, the atoms become more electronegative. As you go upwards the periodic table naman, the atoms become more electronegative. Why is that so? Kasi if you have big atom, malaki yung atom mo kasi marami ng electrons, the outer electrons of your atom will no longer fill the nucleus. No? That is what's called the effective nuclear charge. No? 
if the electron is too far away from your atom, the valence electron is too far away from the center of your atom, hindi na niya mafeel yung positiveness ng nucleus or the effective nuclear charge. So as a result, mababa yung kanyang electronegativity. However, if you decrease the size of the atom, ibig sabihin niya, binabawasan mo siya ng electron shell, lumiliit yung atom, mas nalong mafeel ng valence electrons yung nucleus. No? Kasi mas malapit na yung distance ng electron cloud sa nucleus. So it will be more electronegative. Yung atom, mas malakas yung effect niya sa electrons or mas electronegative siya. Okay? And depending on the number, uh, and depending on the electronegativity difference of two atoms bonded together, we can either have a covalent bond, a polar covalent bond, and an ionic bond. No? So what we have here for covalent bond is that you have atoms that share electrons wherein their electronegativity are similar, no? or whose electronegativity difference is less than 0.5. No? So one example of which is the carbon-carbon bond. So ang electronegativity nila ay same. That's 2.4 ata, no? Tama ba? At 2.5. Okay? So 2.5 yung electronegativity ng dalawang carbon. So when you get their electronegativity difference, pag pinag-subtract mo yung dalawang 2.5, you will have zero. That means... Uh, covalent bond yung meron dyan. Walang humihila ng electron. So, the electrons are evenly distributed for this bond. Na. For example, a hyd carbon-hydrogen bond, which are primarily found in alkanes. Kung na, alam ko na, mag-discuss na kayo na. So, yun. So, yung carbon-hydrogen bond natin, ang electronegativity difference natin dyan ay 0 0.4. Carbon is 2.5, hydrogen is 2.1. So, that's 0 0.4, which falls under the category of nonpolar covalent bond or simply covalent bond. No? So, yan. However, as you increase the electronegativity difference by choosing different atoms, we can have polar bonds. No? Polar covalent bonds are type of bonds in which your electronegativity difference is somewhere between 0 0.5 to 1.7. No? So one example of which is the CO bond, carbon-oxygen bond, the OH bond, NH bond, FH bond, etc. No? So yun, so if you obtain the electronegativity difference nila, medyo malaki ang difference. No? So that means if we have a big difference for their electronegativities, what will happen is that one atom will pull the electron of the other atoms more, creating what's called the dipole moment. No? So the more electronegative atom will pull the electron, hence making that atom partial negative. The atom in which yung electron niya ay hinila, that will be partial positive in charge na. So, nakakaroon tayo ng dipole. Okay? So, whenever we have polar covalent bond, we have dipole bonds. No? So, may, ano, hindi balance yung electronegativity difference or hindi balance yung distribution ng electron because of the electronegativity difference. However, if we further increase the electronegativity difference, what happens is that instead of sharing the bond, one atom will totally pull out the electron of the other atom, creating ions. No? So kapag itong si sodium, kumabit siya kay oxygen, ang electronegativity ng sodium ay 0 0.9, ang oxygen ay 3.5, kunin mo yung difference nun, greater than 2. No? So medyo malaki sa 2, hindi ko na sinubtract. So, ibig sabihin nun, there's no sense to create a bond na, no? Wala nang bond na mabubuo kasi hihilahin na niya ng tuluyan yung electron ng iyong sodium. And that will create you uh, complete charged particles, no? Dito, partially lang yung charge ng particles na. So, partially charged particles, we have completely charged particles here, okay? So, yun lang. So, depending on the electronegativity difference of your atoms, you can either have a covalent polar or ionic bonds. Na. So, basically, nire-review lang natin yung chapter 3. Na. Mas mamaya yung chapter 5 naman nire-reviewin natin. Na. Okay. So, yun lang yung ano, mga important idea sa org chem. 
Kasi yung idea ng electronegativity, magagamit nyo yan hanggang work. Hanggang work nyo. Okay? So ngayon, let's focus on the atom itself. No? So what we know about the atoms is that they are not in, uh, yung electrons nila, they are not in orbits as said by Niels Bohr. Hindi daw ganun, no? So according to Erwin Schrödinger and his friends, no? who postulated the quantum theory, the quantum mechanics, sabi nila, the electrons are not orbiting around the nucleus. Rather, they are found in clouds. No? They're found in patches kung saan doon mo makikita yung most probable location of your electron. So depending on the type of orbital that your atom has, you can have different um, Struck. Uh, you can have different shapes for your orbitals. No? So it could be spherical if it is in S orbital. You can have dumbbell shapes if that's in P orbitals. No? Okay? So dito lang tayo sa dalawang types ng orbital, S and P. Because yung D and F orbitals, we do not cover that much. So or di natin kinocover masyado yan. For P orbitals, we also have three degenerate um the generate orbitals, no? suborbitals. Ano meaning nun? So they have the same energy. However, the orientation of your orbitals are in different axes. No? Na magkakaiba sila ng axis. No? Yung isa na sa y-axis, yung isa na sa x-axis, yung isa na sa z-axis. No? So yun lang yung idea niya dyan. No? So this, uh, the shape of your electrons are described by the wave functions or the psi square. No? So the psi is the wave function. No? So these shapes are described by mathematical equations given by the wave function. Um, medyo masamang ano yan eh. Masamang alaala sa amin yan sa chemistry. <laughs> Daming math eh. Okay. So anyway, so what they also knew that time is that the electrons do not behave as particles lang. Hindi lang pala particle yung electrons na nagja-jump-jump. Rather, it also has a wave property, no? So, yung ating electrons, they, uh, they travel as waves as well, no? Para lang siyang light, no? Di ba yung photon, it is a particle and a wave at the same time, no? So, they found out na yung electrons, ganun din. So, our electrons can either be positive in wave or negative in wave, no? So, kaya we have the red sphere and the blue sphere, no? So, yan. So, yung mga naka-upward, sila yung mga positive waves ng electron. Yung mga naka-downward, sila yung negative waves ng electron, no? Okay? So, ganun. And when filling out the elect uh, when filling out the atom, no? Kapag yung electrons, if you fill natin sa ating atoms, they usually fill out the lowest orbital first, then uh, gradually increasing to the higher energy orbitals. No? So, ibig sabihin nun, ito lang yung off-bow principle. We start with the lowest energy, increasing to higher energy orbitals as we the number of carb, uh, electrons. No? We can describe the uh, electron location in our atom using orbital diagrams, which is yung ginawa natin dati. Yung may mga araw-araw na. No? So, the location of our electrons can be described by orbital diagrams. For example, yung electron ng hydrogen, ilalagay natin siya sa 1s orbital. Usually, that is a positive spin first, na? Then, yung ipipare mo sa kanya ay naka-negative spin or naka-downward yung arrow, na? So, the more atoms, uh, the more electrons we have, the more electrons that occupy the different orbitals of our atoms, na? So, yan. So, kapag kumpuno na yung 1s orbital, susunod na yung 2s, then after ng 2s, isa-isa nang mapupuno yung 2p orbitals, no? Then, what do we know about this stuff, no? Alam natin, according to valence bond theory, is that yung ating electrons, they are paired, no? So, yung ating electrons, they combine to form molecules. Yun lang yung sinasabi ng valence bond theory. The valence electrons are overlapped, no, in a constructive interference mode for them to create bonds. No? Diba dalawa yung uri ng waves sa physics natin? We have the constructive interference and the destructive interference. No? If our electrons happen to come together in a constructive interference mode, 
ibig sabihin, makang-form tayo ng bonds. If sila ay nagsama sa destructive interference mode, hindi sila makakaform ng bond. No? So, ganun din yung electrons. Para rin siyang wave. No? So, yun yung kinalaman ng physics sa chem. No? Um, dadaanan lang natin to Puro chika lang muna ako ngayon. Mas mamaya yung pinaka-important thing talaga. No? Kwentohan ko lang to mga slide na to. So, ano sabi sa valence bond theory? The valence electrons no, can come together to form constructive interferences so a bond can be created. Kapag destructive interference yung meron, hindi mafoform yung bond. Okay? So, ganun lang. Whenever one electron combines with the other electrons, we will have what's called the sigma bond. No? So, kapag isang bond lang yung magagawa nila, ang tawag doon ay sigma bond. No? Okay? The sigma bond is a product when our electrons overlap their atomic orbitals. No? Pag nag-overlap yung atomic orbitals ng dalawang atom in a constructive interference. Ayun lang. Ngayon, punta tayo sa molecular orbital theory, no? So, uh, what's what's with this, no? So, sabi natin, di ba, yung ating atoms, in order for them to create a molecule, their electrons have to undergo a constructive interference, no? Kailangan yung electrons nila magsama together to form a constructive interference forming a sigma bond, no? So, that means, ang dalawang atom na may iba't ibang atomic orbitals, they have to join their electrons to form molecular orbitals na. So, ito atomic orbital ng hydrogen. This is another atomic orbital of hydrogen. So, pinagsasama nila yung kanilang properties to create the molecular orbitals or the MOs na. So, yan. So, whenever we have constructive interference, we have what's called the bonding molecular orbital. Kapag yan ay destructive interference, yun ay anti-bonding molecular orbital. No? So, ang goal natin is pag pinagsama natin atomic orbitals, makakagawa tayo ng constructive interference or ng bonding orbital. Dito form yung chemical bond. No? However, if the electron is excited to the anti-bonding orbital, mapuputol yung bond. No? Okay? So, ganun lang. So, whenever we create bonds, ano mapapansin natin? That is lower in energy, no? Just as what we described earlier, no? Dito, sa describe ni Lewis. Sabi dito, when we combine the electrons, we have bonds, and as a result, mababa yung energy niyan. So, the same concept is true for the molecular orbital theory. When our electrons are forming bonds, that means nagpo-form sila ng constructive interference, bumababa yung energy ng system. Hence, it becomes stable. However, during chemical reaction, if you want to cut the bond, you have to provide energy para maputol yung chemical bonds. No? Kaya, yung energy na, kaya yung reaction natin minsan, sometimes it requires energy no? para maputol yung mga chemical bond. No? So, ito molecular orbital theory yung nagde-describe nun. Okay. Ngayon, punta tayo kay carbon because carbon is the focus of organic chemistry, no? So, this is the molecular orbital of uh, this is the atomic orbital of carbon. Uh, ilang electrons meron si carbon? Anim. So, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, no? So, I think 1s2, 2s2, ito yung 2p2. Yung 1s, hindi natin papansinin yan because this corresponds to a noble gas helium. So this is a core electron. We will not focus on this. Rather, we will focus on the 2s and the 2p electrons. Ano alam natin kay carbon? It can form four bonds. Apat na bonds kaya niya gawin. Pero tignan niya yung atomic orbital niya. Mayroon kang paired electron sa 2s. Tapos, may dalawa kang unpaired electron sa 2p. Di ba sabi natin, kapag paired yung electron, lone pair yung... So, ibig sabihin, dapat yung carbon, it should only be able 
to form two bonds. Dapat dalawang bonds lang yung pwede niya gawin. Kasi yun yung sabi ng kanyang atomic orbital. Yung 2s electrons bonded yan. Magkasama yan. So, lone pair yan dapat. Ibig sabihin, itong dalawa yung pwede gamitin sa bonding. So, is that true? Is that true stone? Totoo ba to? <laughs> Ang sagot ay, hindi. No? Kasi what we see in nature is that carbon is tetravalent. No? Alam natin yan since then, noong panahon pa ng mga lumang tao. Alam natin that carbon is tetravalent. Apat na bonds kaya niya gawin. How come na dito, dalawa lang yung pwede gawin? Okay? So, dito nagkakaroon ng question marks yung mga tao, yung mga chemist. No? Isip sila, bakit ganun? Apat yung kaya niyang bonds pero may lone pair siya. Dalawa lang yung bakante. Anyare. So, yun yung isip nila. No? So, nakaisip sila ng meth, uh, remedyo. No? So, anong ginawa ng mga chemist natin? Uh, this was their idea. No? In order for carbon to be tetravalent, no? in order for it to accommodate four extra electrons to create bonds, what it does is that it hybridizes its atomic orbital. Hina-hybridize yung atomic orbital niya. Paano yon? So, focus tayo dito. So, di ba ito yung 2s electron? No? Dapat paired yan. Pero alam natin, in nature, hindi yan nangyayari. No? Carbon is tetravalent. That means, dapat may apat na unpaired electrons. May four single dots dapat sa Lewis dot symbol. So, what happens here daw sa carbon, for it to be tetravalent, it promotes one electron sa 2s orbital na mapunta sa 2p. So, pinopromote niya yung isang electron para mapunta siya sa 2p orbital. And as a result of that excitation, your carbon now has four unpaired electrons. One, two, three, four. And those unpaired electrons can be used to create bonds with four different atoms. No? So, dun nagiging tetravalent ang ating carbon. Okay? So, yun yung idea lang. So, ano uli nangyari? Originally, may dalawang electron sa 2s na paired. May dalawang electron sa 2p na unpaired. So, that limits the idea na si carbon. Uh, that is against the idea na si carbon ay tetravalent. Kasi, paired yung dalawang electrons. Dalawa lang yung bakante. So, dapat dalawang bonds lang kaya niya gawin. Pero hindi yun totoo, na? No? What happens daw kasi is that one of the electrons of carbon is being promoted to the 2p orbital creating four single electrons which can be used to create bonds. No? Ito yung reason bakit tetravalent ang ating carbon. Apat na single electrons waiting to be paired by other electrons from other atoms. No? So, yan. So, what happens also here, after exciting one electron, after ma-excite yung isang electron dito papunta sa 2p orbital, it hybridizes the energies of these orbitals, the PES and the P orbital. So, ano meaning ng hybridizes the energy? Meaning lang nun, pinagsasama niya yung apat na orbitals to create the hybrid sp3 orbital. No? So, yung energies na yan, di ba, mapapansin niya, magkahiwalay. Teka lang, lobat. Ayun. So, di ba, mapapansin niyo, yung 2S and yung 2P, magkaiba yung energy nila, no? So, medyo mahihirapan mag-form yan ng bond, no? For the carbon to be able to create bonds easily, it would be better if those electrons are of the same energy. Ibig sabihin, iisa sila ng energy. So, after promoting the electron from 2s to 2p, ang ginagawa ni carbon is ini-equalize niya yung electron sa second orbital niya, ay sa second energy level niya. So, pinagpapantay-pantay niya yon creating the four degenerate sp3 orbitals. So, pinagsasama-sama na niya yung identity ng s and p orbitals. No? So, makakagawa siya ng four single bonds na. No? Four degenerate sp3 orbitals na. No? So, itong sp3 orbital natin, this can form a single bond and has a 25 
75% S character and 75% P character, no? So, yan. So, kumbaga, hybrid siya ng S and the P orbital. Di ba yung S orbital, bilog lang. Yung P orbital, dumbbell. So, pag pinagsama mo yung properties nila, ganito yung maging itsura, no? At which your carbon has four of this, may apat siyang ganyan, waiting to be paired by other atoms sa dulo, no? So, for example, we have methane. So, yung methane, ilang bonds to hydrogen meron siya. Meron siyang apat na bonds to hydrogen, no? So, it makes use of carbon's sp3 orbitals. Yung apat na sp3 orbitals, ginagamit niya to create single bonds with the hydrogens, no? So, ito yung sp3 orbital. Yan, yung, yung cute na yan. Yan, no? So, yun yung apat na sp3 orbitals ng ating carbon. And that is being used to create bonds with hydrogen. No? So, nagsasama yung spherical orbital ng hydrogen with the sp3 orbital ng carbon. Okay? So, pag nagsama sila, they create the molecule methane. The angle of those bonds is around 109.5. No? So, that makes up for a tetrahedron shape. No? Yun yung triangle, trigonal pyramidal na yung atoms ay nasa corners ng ating triangle. No? Nasa four corners ng ating triangle. Okay? So, when your carbon can form four bonds, no? kapag yung carbon, apat yung bonds na kaya niya gawin, four bonds to different atoms. Ano meron? Ah, napipindot ko pala yung ano, laptop. Okay. So, if your carbon can form four bonds to different atoms, meron kang sp3, apat na sp3 orbitals na. And the molecule ay tetrahedral. So, yun lang yung kailangan nyo i-take note talaga. So, dami nang sinabi ko, yan lang yung important. Yes, ganun talaga. Welcome to OrgChem. Okay? Uh, paano uli na form yung hybrid orbital? Prenomote yung electron to 2p. Tapos, ano ginawa? Itong apat na single electron, pinagsama-sama yung energy nila to create four degenerate sp3 orbitals. Each electrons in the sp3 orbital can form single bonds. No? So, kapag nakita yun, puro single bond yung naka-attach sa, sa kanya, that means, ang hybridization ng carbon na yun ay sp3. Okay? So, kapag may at apat na bond siya to different atoms, sp3 ang kanyang orbital uh, hybridization. And then, shape niya ay tetrahedral. No? So, let's now focus on the other versions of um, hybrid orbitals ni carbon. Kasi what we also know is that carbon can form double bonds and triple bonds. So, let's try to explain that. No? So, for example, we have ethylene, which is, a, which is an alkene. Oh, na ming ming. Meow. Meow. <laughs> May sakit kasi yung mga anak niya kaya ganun. Okay? So, this is ethylene. This is an alkene with two carbons. Eth, ethylene. Dalawa yung ano. May double bond doon. So, eth kasi dalawang carbons. In kasi may double bond na. So, yan. So, we also know that carbon can form double bonds, no? Uh, paano nangyayari yun? Kasi alam natin, puro single bond, di ba? Dapat puro single bond yung gawin ni carbon. Not really. No? So, balik ulit tayo dito sa orbital diagram natin. So, this is the product after your electrons are, uh, after your 2S electron has been promoted to the 2P orbital. Okay. Di ba may electron dito kanina na punta doon? Kaso ganito, carbon can choose not to make all this, ano, Carbon can choose not to make all these electrons degenerate. No? Ibig sabihin, it has an option not to use one orbital. Kunwari, dito sa tatlong P orbital, yung isa hindi niya gagamitin. Pwede yon. So as a result, you will have three degenerate sp2 orbitals instead. No? Hindi na siya sp3, sp2 na siya. Sir, ano... Paano namin malalaman kung sp3, sp2? O, ganito lang. S, p1, p2, sp2. Ganun, ganun ginagawa ka eh. Bilangin mo lang kung ilang 
ilang electrons, uh, ilang bonds kaya niya gawin with other atom. Uh, ilang atom pwede niya dugtungan. Uh, dito, tatlo. Di ba sa alkin, ganon. Ito yung isang dinudugtungan niya. Ito yung isa. Ayun yung isa. So, ibig sabihin nun, S, P1, S, P2. Okay? So, ganun lang. Yun yung shortcut ko. Uh, ganun din ginagawa ko dito para sa, ano, para sa sp3 hybrid orbital. Pag apat na bonds na gagawa niya, ito yung S, ito yung sp1, sp2, sp3. Okay, so, pag apat na bonds yung, apat na bonds to different atoms, sp3 hybridized. Uh, S, sp1, sp2, sp3. Yan, so, yun yung hybridization ng carbon na yan. Pero, for example, ito, S, sp1, sp2 lang. Okay? So, ganun lang. Okay, so, anong ginagawa ni carbon dito? Carbon may not choose no, to use the other orbital. Pwede hindi niya gamitin yan to create bonds. No? Hmm, teka lang. Ayan, so carbon may not use this electron para maging reserva siya. No? So, itong sp2 orbitals natin, ito ay mga sigma bonds. No? Again, sigma bonds yung mga yan. Ano nangyayari dito sa extra na 2p orbital, yung hindi ginamit? Siya yung nagiging pi electron. Okay? So, ano itsura nun? Okay. So, when your carbon is sp2 hybridized, it has 3 sp2 orbitals and 1 an hybridized p orbital. So, asan yung tatlong sp2 orbital? Ito yung mga to. Ayan. Ayun. Ayun. Tapos, etong p orbital, so yung p orbital, magre-remain yan as p orbital pa rin. Diba yung p orbital, naka-dumbbell. Uh, naka so, yan. So, preserve pa rin yung pagiging dumbbell niya. Okay? And this unhybridized p orbital can be used to create pi bonds. No? Okay? So, yan. So, dito kakabit yung single bonds, and then you have your p orbital here. No? So, what happens kapag tayo ay nagpo-form ng acetylene? Paano siya nagiging double bond doon? Oops. I, I mean ng ethylene. Okay. So, kung mapapansin ninyo, may double bond dyan, pero alam natin na tatlo yung sigma bonds dito, di ba? So, ibig sabihin, dapat tatlo lang yung bond. Bakit doon may double bond? No? So, ganito lang nangyayari kasi, no? So, itong tatlong sigma bonds that will be used to create single bonds with other atoms. Itong sigma bond na to with hydrogen, sigma bond na yan with this hydrogen, and sigma bond with this carbon. Ang question, saan dito napupunta yung double bond? Paano nagkakaroon ng double bond? Okay. This is sp2 hybridized. So, it has this empty p orbital. Itong carbon na to, this is also sp2 hybridized. Itong carbon na to, ito yung sigma bond to H. Ito yun, sigma bond to H. Ito yung sigma bond na sp2 kay H na yun. As ito yung sp2 sigma bond kay carbon na to. Ang tanong, saan galing tong isang double bond? Ganito kasi nangyayari. No? If they have two unoccupied p orbitals, di ba may isang electron doon kanina? Ayan, di ba may isang electron sa p orbital? So, may isang electron dyan sa p orbital, tapos yung kabilang molecule, ay, yung kabilang atom, may isa pang electron sa p orbital. Ang pwede nila gawin is that since they have single electrons, they can, uh, they can create what's called the pi bond. No? So, what happens if we have a pi bond? So, ano nangyayari? We have a p overlap, no? pi overlap. So, ano nangyayari doon? Di ba may dalawang p orbital na nakaganon? Ang mangyayari dyan, pagdidikitin niya yan. No? Pagdidikitin niya yan. No? So, that creates that double bond doon. Okay? Ito ay sigma bond. Ito yon. Then, yung isang excess bond doon, yun yung sa pi overlap. Okay? Yung dalawang, yung tig isang electron ng p orbital nila, nagjo-join to form the double bond. No? Okay, so that's what, uh, yun yung nangyayari kung bakit may, uh, kung bakit meron tayong double bond. No? Yung isa doon ay sigma bond, 
yun yung sp2 hybridized uh, bond then yung other bond that is the unused no unused p orbital so ito yung isang unused p orbital this is the other unused p orbital so ginagawa nila oy may isa akong electron may isa rin ako share tayo so gagawa sila ng pi bond no or pi overlap magdidikit lang sila sa taas no so that creates the double bond so ito yung itsura ng pi bond no so hindi lang itong red yung magdidikit pati yung p syempre sa baba no magdidikit lang sila then the electron can travel here no yung dalawang electron pwede sila magsama diyan Okay, so sabi dito, the p orbitals here overlap to form pi bonds. Pi bonds are weaker than sigma bonds. No? Ah, basta yun, sabi lang niya, yung p orbitals ginagamit to create the pi bond. No? The double bond. No? Okay, so yun lang yung meaning, uh, yun lang yung reason bakit may double bond yung ating carbon. No? Actually, hindi lang yan limited to carbon, even other atoms. No? So naging general din yung usage nito. Apunta naman tayo sa triple bond, no? So, for example, we have acetylene, which is used in blowtorch, na? Yung mga pang-welding. Okay. So, how come na mayroon tayong triple bond, no? Okay. So, ganito daw nangyayari. Looking at the atomic orbital of your carbon, in which your 2s orbital has been promoted already to the 2p orbital, so, naging single-single na yan, again, yung carbon kaya niya mamili kung ano yung pwede niya gamitin, ano yung pwede niya pagsamahin to create hybrid orbital. So, if carbon chooses not to use two of them, two of the 2p orbitals, ano mangyayari? Magkakaroon tayo ng 2p orbitals na hindi na hybridize at dalawang degenerate sp orbital. S and P. So, tig-isa, S and P. Okay? So, ganito nangyayari, no? So, yan. So, carbon can choose not to use all of them. Pwede niya gamitin yung isa. Uh, pwede hindi niya gamitin yung isa. Pag hindi niya ginamit yung isa, we can have sp2 hybridized carbon. Kung saan, isa lang yung p orbital. Pag dalawa yung hindi ginamit niya, magkakaroon tayo ng sp orbital or sp hybridized carbon. May dalawa siyang sigma bond and may dalawa siyang pi bonds. No? So, yan. So, ganun yung mangyayari. So, yun yung kay acetylene. Okay? So, compare natin yan na start tayo bago tayo mag-proceed. Compare natin yun with, ano, with sp3 hybridized orbital. Lahat ginamit to create degenerate orbitals. Lahat yan, tig sa single bond ang pwede niyan gawin. For sp2 hybridized orbital, yung isa hindi ginamit yung tatlo ginamit to create sp2 orbitals. Etong hindi ginamit na p orbital that is used to create the pi bond, no? So siya ay ginamit to create the pi bond, hence you have the double bond. Okay? So sa acetylene, dalawa yung ating p orbitals na hindi ginamit. So question, ilang pi bond yung magagawa natin diyan? Dalawa din, okay? So, ito yung itsura ng acetylene. So, ito yung ating sp hybridized sigma bond. Ito yung s, ito yung sp. So, ito yung isang sp, ito yung isa pang sp. Ito yung isang sp, ito yung isa pang sp. Then, you have two pi bonds. No? Ano ulit itsura? Ay, you have two p orbitals pala. So, ano itsura ng p orbital natin? Uh, dumbbell. So, ito yung unang dumbbell. Ito yung ikalawang dumbbell. Okay? So, itong dumbbell sa taas, pwede yan makagawa ng pi bond. So, pwede sila magsama to create a pi bond. So, ibig sabihin yan, may double bond na tayo. Then, yung isa pang pi bond, we can also create double bond there. So, ilang bonds na between this carbon and this carbon? We have a sigma bond in the middle. We have pi bond and another pi bond so single bond double bond triple bond no so that's why acetylene has three pole bonds no bakit ganyan yung kanyang uh, 
bond. No? So, yung isa dyan, itong nasa gitna, ito ay the sigma bond. Yan yung sp hybrid orbital. Ito yung isa pang sp hybrid orbital. So, ano tong dalawang line na to? Yung dalawang line na yan, yun ay ang p overlap. Yung pi bond overlap. No? Ayan. Umaagree yung pusa. No? So, ayan. So, ito yung ano, dalawang p orbitals natin. Okay? So, ganun lang. So, with that idea, we can actually uh, have an idea kung ano yung hybridization ng carbon natin in our molecule. No? So, just check kung ilang double bonds meron siya. No? Okay. Uh, kung may double bond yan, that means the carbon is sp2 hybridized. Kapag puro single bond yan, that means your carbon is sp3 hybridized. Kapag yan ay may triple bond, that means the carbon has sp hybridized orbital. So, ganun lang yung shortcut dito. No? So, sa dami ng sinabi ko, kapag single bond lang yan, yan ay sp3 hybridized. Kapag may double bond, yan ay sp2 hybridized. And kapag may triple bond, yan ay may sp hybridized atom. Okay? So, yan lang yung shortcut. Medyo masalimuot lang talaga yung introduction niya. Ganun talaga eh. Wala tayong magagawa doon. <laughs> okay? So, let's check. Uh, sabi dito sa problem, identify the hybridization state of each carbon atom in the following compound. Okay? So, we have this compound. Let's identify the hybridization of each carbon. So, let's begin with this one. So, this carbon, may double bond ba? May triple bond ba? Wala. Mapapansin mo, may apat siyang bonds. Isa, dalawa, tatlo, apat. So, ano meaning nun? So, pag may apat siyang sig sigma bonds, yun ay sp3 hybridized carbon. Okay? So, ang s and p orbitals ay pinagsama-sama to create four degenerate sp3 hybridized orbital. So, ito sp3 yan, sp3 to, sp3 yon, sp3 ito. Okay? So, that's the hybridization of this carbon. How about this carbon here? Yan ay may apat na sigma, uh, single bonds no? or sigma bonds. No? Isa, dalawa, tatlo, apat. So, that is also sp3 hybridized. No? Uh, how about this carbon? So, this carbon... Mayroon siyang double bond. No? So, ibig sabihin nun, dito sa double bond, isa dyan ay sigma bond. Yung isa dyan, P, uh, pi bond. No? P bond daw. So, yung isa ay sigma bond, yung isa ay pi bond. No? So, yung pi bond, yun yung galing sa P orbitals. No? So, ano yung tsura nun? Ganito. So, ito yung pi bond na yun. Yun yung isa sa double bond. No? Ayan. Meow. Meow. So, yan. So, yung isa dyan, yung isang, isang bond dyan sa carbon na to, yan ay P uh, pi bond. No? So, yan. So, na hybridization na ito. So, may isa kang pi bond, tapos may tatlo kang single bonds. No? Ito, ito, ayun, nasa baba. So, yan ay SP2. Another way to check yung hybridization niya, bilang atoms nakapalibot sa kanya. Isa, dalawa, tatlo. Pag tatlong atoms nakapalibot sa kanya, sp2 yon. Kapag apat, sp3. 1, 2, 3, 4. O, ganun yung shortcut dyan. Bilangin mo na lang kung ilang atoms na sa paligid niya. Isa, dalawa, tatlo, apat, sp3. Kapag tatlo, isa, dalawa, tatlo, sp2 yon. So that means dito sa double bond na yan, one of the bond there is the pi bond na. No? Yung isa is sigma bond. So, that is also true for this carbon. SP2 hybridized din yan. Bakit? Kasi may tatlo siyang group sa paligid. No? So, isa, dalawa, tatlo. Yung tatlong atoms na yon, they are connected with a single bond. Sigma bond yon. And yung isang double bond that is created by the pi bond, the p orbital overlap na. No? Okay. So, yan. How about this carbon? 
So this carbon, may apat tayong different groups. Isa, dalawa, tatlo, apat. Automatically, sp3 hybridized yan. So puro single bonds lang yung makita natin. Okay? How about this carbon? This carbon and this carbon. So mapapansin mo, itong carbon na to, ilang atoms na nakakonekta sa kanya? Dalawa. Isa ito, ito yung isa. So that means yan ay sp hybridized. No? So may dalawa yan sigma bond. Ito yung isang sigma bond. Ito yung isang sigma bond yun na sa gitna. How about the two other bonds sa triple bonds? The two other bonds sa triple bond ay product when our p orbitals overlap. So may dalawa orbitals for this carbon, ibig sabihin nun, this carbon is sp hybridized. No? So, ito yon, Ito yung sigma bond, as ito yung dalawang other bond. So, ito yung isang bond, ito yung isang bond. Ayan, pati, ayun. So, may triple bond ka sa gitna, sa gitna ng dalawang atoms natin. Okay? So, the same is true for this one. May dalawa kang group ng atoms doon. They are connected with the sigma bond. Yung dalawang natirang, ano doon, yung dalawang natirang line, yun ay ang um, pi bond. Okay? So, ganun. So, yan. Uh, it's up to you. Pwede nyo gamitin yung idea ng number of atoms connected to the carbon. So, kapag may four atoms connected to it, yan ay sp3 hybridized. Pag may three atoms, yan ay sp2 hybridized kapag dalawang atom sp hybridized na. No? Siyempre, wala yung isang atom na. No? I am forever alone. Dalawang atoms lang yung nasa paligid niya. So, yan. You can check the hybridization by counting the number of atoms present around them, no? Okay? Pwede rin naman on the basis of bonds, no? Pag puro single bond, yan ay sp3. Kapag may isang double bond, yan ay sp2. Kapag may triple bond, yan ay sp, hybridized atom. Okay? So, yun yung mga shortcuts na pwede ninyo gamitin. Oh, what I want you to do is to check the hybridization state of carbon atoms of the following compound. Okay? So, ayan. Teka lang. Oh, sige, so bigyan ko kayo ng 5 minutes. Check nyo yung hybridization ng mga carbon atoms na yan. Then, sasabihin ko yung sagot mamaya na. So, I will give you 5 minutes na. Again, oh, lista ko dito. Pag 4 atoms yun nasa paligid, yan ay sp3 hybridized. Pag 3 atoms, yan ay sp2. Pag dalawang atom, yan ay sp hybridized carbon. Okay? So, yung carbon lang titignan nyo, ha? Okay. Sige, five minutes.
Okay, so let's continue na. Discover lang ako, nag-google kasi ako. Pag search nyo pala yung Vanquish Willom sa Google, ang lalabas ay UST. <laughs> Ngayon ko lang discover yan. <laughs> so anyway, so let's try to determine the hybridization state of each carbon for the following compounds. Na? So let, let's begin with this one. So... Uh, you, uh, again, you can check the hybridization of the carbon based on the number of atoms around it or if it contains double bond or best account the number of pi bonds. No? So, ganun. Okay, so, ang pinaka-easiest na way to under, uh, to check kung ano yung hybridization niya is just count the number of atoms around it. Ganun din ginagawa ko kasi, no? Kala nyo kayo lang, ako, lang, ako rin, na no? Okay? So, kasi kapag may mga double bonds, for example, ito, nakakaliton, di ba? Okay? So, hindi siya obvious na triple bond, pero SP hybridized itong mga to, no? So, bilangin mo na lang yung atoms around the carbon. So, for example, this one, it has four different atoms around it. One, two, three, four. So that is sp3 hybridized, no? Paghapon talaga naglalabasan lahat ng ingay sa amin eh. <laughs> So this is sp3 hybridized. Okay, so ito, ilang atoms meron sa paligid niya? Tatlo, isa, dalawa, tatlo. So this is sp2 hybridized as shown as meron siyang isang double bond, no? So, one of the bond there ay sigma bond. Isang sp2 hybridized bond yon. Then, yung other one, yung isa pang isa, I mean, yung isa, no? Yung isang yon ay yung p overlap, no? Yung pi bond, yung pi orbital overlap nila. Okay, so, yun yung gumawa ng pi bond. About this carbon here, uh, may tatlong atoms around it. This one, this one, that one. So that is also sp2 hybridized. Same as the other one. Okay. sp2. Uh, uh, sp3, sp2, sp2, sp2. So yun yung sagot dyan. Uh, how about this one? Mm, so ito. May four different atoms around it. Lahat ay naka single bond. So that's obviously sp3 hybridized carbon. This carbon here. And that carbon, parehas yung sp hybridized carbon. Dalawang atoms lang around them. And dalawang atoms around them, they are connected by the sp hybrid orbital. Yung dalawang bond don, that is the pi bond or the pi overlap na. Okay, the pi electron overlap. Okay? So, ganun lang. Okay, ito. Itong dalawang carbon na yan, sabi ng pusa ko, yan ay sp3 hybridized carbons. No? Okay? So, yan. Kasi may apat na, tatl apat na different groups ka. And all atoms are connected via a single bond. No? So, sp3 to, sp3 din yan. How about this one? This is, ano, butene, cyclobutene. Nag-naming na kayo siguro, no? So, alam nyo na kapangalanan to. So, this is cyclobutene. Um, ano hybridization nito at ito? So, yan ay parehas na sp3. Kasi may four different groups attached to it via a single bond. Okay. Then, itong dalawang other atoms dito. Yan ay sp2. Kasi may tatlong groups attached to it. No? And may isa siyang double bond. No? So, yan. So, yung isang double bond doon, yun ay product ng p orbital overlap. No? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, ito naman. So, letter D tayo. Itong carbon na yan. That carbon is sp2 hybridized. Kasi may tatlong atoms around it. No? 
And may isa siyang single, uh, may isa siyang pi bond doon. Uh, so, sp2 hybridized yan. How about these two carbons here? So, medyo hindi obvious, pero yan ay sp, uh, sp yan, no? sp hybridized carbon. Kasi may dalawang atom sa paligid nila. Pero sir, wala siyang triple bond. Ganito kasi nangyari dyan. Yung isang pi bond ginamit niya sa left, yung isang pi bond ginamit niya sa right. Ganon din dito, yung isa ginamit niya sa left, yung isa ginamit niya sa right. No? So, hindi obvious na triple bond dyan, pero sp hybridized carbon pa rin yan. Okay? And then, lastly, we have this carbon here. Yan ay sp2 hybridized carbon. So, may isa siyang pi bond, then the rest ay sp2 hybridized uh, sigma bonds. No? And then lastly, uh, dalawang carbon atoms lang yan. This one and that one. Ito nasa baba, this is sp2 hybridized carbon. Itong nasa taas ay sp hybridized carbon. So, ito yung isang pi bond. Ito yung isa pang pi bond. No? So, dalawa yung pi bond for this carbon. Dito sa carbon na to, isa lang. So, ganun. No? Ayan. So, yun lang. Ayun. <laughs> Ngayon naman, punta naman tayo sa concept of bond strength and bond length. No? So, depending on the type of your bond, iba-iba yung length nila at iba-iba yung strength. No? So, yan. So, let's check this trend na lang. So, ito na lang yung trend. Tignan natin. So, this is the trend. This is the comparison of bond lengths and bond energies for ethane, ethylene, and acetylene. So, dalawang carbons yan. Though the bonds are different. The hybridizations are different. Ito, sp3 hybridized, sp2 hybridized, sp hybridized carbon. No? So, mababansin nyo, by observing at their bond length, the more bonds no, between the carbon or the, yung kapag siya ay nagiging sp hybridized no, from sp3, sp2, sp hybridized, ano nangyari sa bond length? Mas lalong umiigse. No? Ako, I think of that as rope. No? Kunwari, you want to secure two atoms together. Pwede gawin mo isang, isang tali lang. Single bond yon. Pero, if you create multiple ano, linkage around them, gumagawa ka ng double bond or triple bond, ano nangyari sa dalawang objects? Dumidikit together, di ba? So, ganun din yung nai-imagine ko dito. Ano? So, for example, ito single rope lang. So, ito yung bond length niya. However, if you create multiple ropes around that atom, mas, mas nagdidikit yung atoms. No? So, yun. So, if you have an sp hybridized carbon, that will give you the shortest bond length. So, magkadikit na magkadikit yung kanilang atoms. No? Magkadikit yung kanilang nuclei as compared to the sp3 hybridized carbon. So, for bond length, BL, oh, hindi yan boy, lab na. No? So, yan ay sp3, ang lowest, fall, ay... Ano pala? Baliktad. Ayan. So, sp3 yung longest, followed by sp2. Then, ang pinakamaigsi ay sp, hybridized carbon. Okay? So, in terms of bond length, ito yung mahaba, ito yung maigsi. No? Okay. So, how about the bond energy? Okay, so for the bond energy, mapapansin natin ano nangyayari. Ito yung single bond, 36, uh, 368 kJ per mole. If we have double bond, yung energy ay almost twice of the, the single bond. No? And if you have triple bond, that is almost two uh, uh, ano ba? Di siya two third. <laughs> That's three halves, no? Uh, that uh, amount. Three halves the times so of this amount, no? So, ano mangyayari? So, as we increase the number of bonds between the carbon atoms, tumataas ang bond energy. 
Bakit? Kasi, ano nangyayari? Kasi, if you want to cut that bond, no, pag gusto mo putulin yung bond na yan, dito madali lang. Kutsilyuhin mo lang, putol yan. Pero ito, medyo mahirap kasi dalawa yung puputulin mong bond. You have to excite the electrons of these bonds para sila ay mapunta sa destructive interference, no? Para maputol yung bond na yan. Mas lalo na to kasi ang daming bonds eh, no? So, para maputol mo yung bonds na yan, it will require you more energy to cut them, no? Para ma-promote yung electron nila towards the destructive interference. Mapuputol yon. Mas marami kang dadalhin sa destructive interference dito kaysa dito. Kasi mas maraming electrons dito sa bonds na yan compared to this one. Dalawa electrons dito, apat dito, anim dito. Okay? So mas mahirap putulin ito kaysa dito. So in terms of bond energy, ang pinakamatasang energy ay sp, followed by sp2, then lastly ay sp3. Okay? So as you can see, the bond length and the bond energy are inversely proportional. The higher the bond length, the weaker, the uh, mas madali siya putulin, no? the easier for you to cut the bond. No? However, if the bonds get closer because of ano, multiple bonds, no? Yan, mas tumataas yung bond energy, mas mahirap siya putulin. No? So, ganun. So, let's have this for example. Uh, let us rank the following bonds in terms of increasing bond length. No? So, alamin natin yung bond length nila. So, ano lang yan? A, B, C. No? Uh, this is A, B, C. In terms of bond length, sino yung mas mahaba? Yung SP hybridized. No? Si A muna yung pinakamahaba followed by the SP2 hybridized. Then, last yung SP hybridized. No? So, SP3 muna, then SP2, then S, uh, SP. So, pinakamahaba na bond length si A, no? then followed by the B, and lastly, si C. When it comes to bond energy, sino yung mas mahirap putulin? Yung maraming bond. No? So, that's C, followed by B, then lastly, CA. A. Ganun lang. Okay. So, yun. So, yun lang. Ah. Yun lang yung mga konsepto ng hybridization. No? Medyo marami, pero you have your PowerPoints with you naman pag samasamahin nyo na lang yung idea. No? Pero, ito lang naman yung trend. No? So, yan. As long as you know the hybridization of your carbon, then you can predict the bond length and the bond energy. Okay? So, ganun lang. Punta ulit tayo sa molecular geometry. Na-discuss natin to last time. Okay? So, in determining the molecular geometry of your molecule, you have to take note of the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, no? or the Vesper theory. It tells us that the electrons, uh, whether it's shared or lone pairs, they repel each other. So, as they repel each other, they orient themselves into 3D orientation. Nag-orient sila into three-dimension space occupying uh, certain regions na minimize yung kanilang repulsion. Okay? So, to determine the molecular geometry, you can check the steric number. No? So, ano steric number? Um, ito ay similar concept with our discussion sa, ang tawag doon, discussion natin sa, sa chapter 3. No? So, basically, inuulit lang natin to ulit. No? So, ano yung steric number? Di ba, kung naalala nyo yung ginagawa nating AB something, AB3E, AB4, yung mga ganon-ganon, ito yung steric number. The groups connected to your central atom A. So, paano mo malalaman kung ano yung steric number? You just count the number of atoms bonded to it, including the lone pairs. No? So, to determine the geometry, Start with the steric number. Ano yung steric number? Yung shared electrons, yun yung mga bonds, no? And then yung lone pairs, no? Ito yung B, ito yung bonded atoms to it, and the number of lone pairs in letter E. So for example, we have this, the we have here methane, CH4. 
So, may apat na bonds yan. So, apat na sigma bonds, 4. How many lone pairs? Wala. So, 4 plus 0 is 4. So, its steric number is 4. Ito naman, si ammonia, NH3. So, si ammonia, may tatlong bonds yan. So, three, bond, uh, three sigma bonds. So, tatlo yung single bonds niya. And then, it has one lone pair. So, isang lone pair. So, ano yung steric number niya? Four. Si water, H2O. Ano meron dyan? Ano meron dyan kay H2O? May dalawang bonds and may dalawang lone pair. So, 2 plus 2 is 4. Diba, last time, ang kwento natin, itong AB4, this is tetrahedral. At may dalawang version yan. Either you have AB3, E or AB2E, no? AB2E2. So, ito yung variations ng ating uh, steric number 4, no? So, pwedeng may tatlong bonds with atoms ka, isang lone pair. Pwedeng, pwedeng dalawang bonds with atom, dalawang lone pair, o kaya lahat bonded to the atoms, no? So, ito lang din yung ginagawa natin last time sa chapter 3, no? Okay? So, if the steric number of your Ano, of your atom is 4, ibig sabihin there are 4 groups around it, yung groups na yun, it could be atoms or lone pairs, then the hybridization of your atom is sp3. If the steric number is 3, then the hybridization is sp2. If the steric number is 2, then it is sp hybridized. No? So ano uli meaning ng steric number? Ito yung mga nasa paligid ng atom. It could be atoms then or lone pairs. No? So, kapag may apat na nakapaligid sa kanya na group, sp3 hybridized. Pag tatlo yung nakapaligid sa kanya na group, sp2 hybridized. Then, kapag dalawa lang yung nakatabi sa kanyang group, sp hybridized. Yung atom na yun. Depending on the hybridization of your atom, you can have different uh, geometries. No? So, ito yung mga geometry na magagamit natin sa org chem. So, kalimutan nyo na medyo yung ano. Pwede nyo na kalimutan yung mga ano, octahedral, no? So, kasi basic-basic lang yung geometry natin dito. So, for example, we have a steric number of 4. The general shape would be tetrahedral, no? Ito yung pinaka-general pattern, no? However, if we start introducing lone pairs, no, kapag yung four bonds ginawa natin, isa doon ay lone pair, yung tetrahedral magiging trigonal pyramidal. Okay? Kapag yung apat na groups, gin, yung dalawa doon ginawa natin electrons, ang magiging shape niya ay bent, no, such as yung sa water. So, yun yung magiging geometry niya. However, the atoms here are all sp3 hybridized kasi ang steric number ay 4. Okay? So, despite na may electron yan or wala, uh, may lone pair yan or wala, no? so SP4, sp3 hybridized pa rin yung atoms dito. Okay? So, pag ang ano naman natin, for example, BF3, boron trifluoride, no? So, the steric number is 3. Tatlong atoms yung nakapalibot sa kanya. So, kapag steric number ay 3, ang shape niya ay trigonal planar. So, para siyang triangle, yung central atom na sa gitna. The other 3 atoms are located on the vertices of your triangle. So, if you have a steric number of 3, that means this boron is sp2 hybridized. Na? sp2 hybridized yung boron na yan. And last one, we have the B, no, si B, beryllium hydride. So, this is, ano, this has two other atoms around it. So, ibig sabihin niya, yung bonding atom sa kanya ay dalawa. So, ang steric number niya ay two. That means, the hybridization of beryllium hydride is sp hybridized. No? Mapapansin niya, depending on the hybridization of your atom, you can have different geometries. Pwedeng tetrahedral, trigonal planar, and linear. Okay? Tapos yung tetrahedral, may tatlo pa siyang version. Tetrahedral, trigonal, pyramidal, or bent. Na. So, the knowledge of molecular geometry is important here as well. Na. So, yan. So, for example, ito yung beryllium trifluoride, sp2 hybridized to. So, you have 
a trigonal planar geometry. Beryllium hydride, yung dalawang hydrogens attached to each end, no? So the geometry is linear, no? Now, by the way, I forgot, no? Kapag sp3 hybridize ang iyong atom, the distances of your bonding groups, either lone perian or atoms, is approximately 109.5 degrees, no? So that's the bond angle of those atoms, no? Pag sp3 hybridized. Pag sp2 hybridized yung central atom mo, the angle of two atom groups ay 120 degrees. Kapag yan ay sp hybridized, 180 degrees ang angle between the two other atoms. No? That's why, dun sa ilong lesson sa org chem, kung nakapag, alam ko nakapag-start na kaya na for sure, important dun yung angle-angle, di ba? Mapapansin nyo, important yung angle dun. May sinusunod tayong pattern sa angle, no? Because of the molecular geometry. Pag triple bond, straight line yan, di ba? Pag yan ay may double bond or single bond, naka-zigzag, no? So, may kinalaman kasi yun sa molecular geometry, no? So, kapag naka-zigzag yun, that means the angle is around 109.5 pwede 120 degrees, no? However, kapag yan ay SP hybridized, such as the acetylene, yung may triple bond, kailangan straight line lang yung representation mo. Okay? Kung nakalimutan nyo na yung molecular geometry, ito yung slide, ito yung summary, pwede nyo to isave. Uh, you can, you may find this useful, na. No? So, download nyo na lang to. Save nyo na to sa cellphone nyo. So, if nakalimutan nyo yung geometry, download nyo yan, na. No? So, may kita natin dito yung steric numbers and the different hybridization no, ng iyong central atoms. These are your electron geometries, the general shape, and these are the variations of the shape. No? So, yan. Download nyo na lang po. No? O, oh, ito last na to. Yung iba dito, di ko na i-discuss ha. Yung dipole moments and polarity, di ko na i-discuss yan. Intermolecular forces, di na rin siguro. Kasi na-discuss na naman to. Dati. Pwede nyo basahin uli, no? Nilagay ko yung ano, relation niya sa org chem and yung solubility. Yung solubility, madi-discuss to sa lab, no? Anyway, papunta tayo dito, molecular geometry. Practice. Use the Vesper theory to predict the geometry for each of the following structures. Paano uli natin mapipredict yung geometry? Identify the hybridization. So depending on the hybridization, your geometry could either be tetrahedral, trigonal planar, or linear. No? So pag sp3 hybridized yan, that's tetrahedral. Pag sp2 hybridized, that's Trigonal planar. Kapag sp hybridized, that's linear, no? So, let's check this one. BH4. Uh, boron, apat na hydrogens. Negative sign. Ibig sabihin nun, yung formal charge kay boron ay negative, no? Okay. So, hindi yan lone pair, ha? Formal charge yan. So, ano kaya hybridization ng boron? So, ano yung steric number niya? Ilan yung atoms na nakapaligid sa kanya? Apat. So, the steric number is 4. So, that means this is sp3 hybridized. So, since this is, uh, since this is sp3 hybridized, daming s na na, uh, ito ay tetrahedral in geometry. Okay? So how about this one, bf4, uh, bf3? Ano yung steric number? Ano yung mga nakapaligid sa kanya? Tatlong atoms, walang lone pair. Okay? So, ano yung magiging shape niya? Yan ay sp2 hybridized kasi tatlong atoms lang nasa paligid sa kanya. Et, ang steric number niya ay 3. So, revamp si Lapu-Lapu. Anyway, so yan ay sp2 hybridized. So, that is trigonal planar. A trigonal planar yung shape niyan. This one, NH4, ammonium ion. 
So our ammonium ion is ano, sp3 hybridized kasi apat na atoms nakapaligid sa kanya. For yung at ano niya, for yung steric number. Apat na atoms, walang lone pair. So for yung steric number. So if the steric number is 4, that means ayan ay tetrahedral. And lastly, this is trichloromethane. That's also tetrahedral. Kasi ang steric number niya ay 4. Okay, so by just looking at the number of atoms around it, the number of lone pairs around it, no, you can identify the steric number and each steric number may give you an idea what would be the geometry of this molecule. No? Okay, so yan. So next one, we have this one. Oh, babasa to. Compare the structures of a carbocation and a carbanion. In one of these ions, the central atom is trigonal planar while the other is trigonal pyramidal or tetrahedral. Using the Vesper theory, assign the correct geometry to each ion. So we have two types of carbon. We have a carbanion. That is a carbon that is negative in charge. Carbanion tawag sa kanya. And we have a carbocation. Carbocation meaning carbon that is positively charged. No? So we will encounter this more sa orchem, lalo na sa lab. No? Okay, so let's check. What is the hybridization of the two carbons? So for carbocation, it is bonded to how many groups around it? Isa, dalawa, tatlo. Tatlong bonds yung pwede niya gawin. Does it possess lone pair? Wala siyang lone pair. So what will be the steric number? Three groups plus zero lone pair is three. So, steric number is three. That means this carbon is sp2 hybridized. No? So, since this is sp2 hybridized, its geometry will be trigonal planar. So, ganun lang. Tignan mo lang yung steric number ng carbon mo. Then, you can predict the hybridization. Then from the hybridization, you can tell the geometry. And next one, we have the carbanion. So this is a this is an anion of carbon. Okay. So ilang bonds kaya niya gawin? Tatlo. One, two, three. Isa sa taas, dalawa sa baba. Then you have your lone pair here. Diba? We count for the lone pairs now. So you have to include that. So you have three atoms one lone pair so the steric number is three plus one four no so yan so apat yung steric number niya which tells us banyon is sp3 hybridized so what will be its geometry tetrahedral or trigonal pyramidal same same now okay so ganun lang Okay then. So, ganun lang. Ayun, tapos na yung lesson natin. Uh, again, di ko na i-discuss yung dipole moments. Uh, na-discuss na naman natin to last time. Uh, again, yung dipole moment that is due to the difference in the electronegativity of your atoms. no? So, may pull ng electron. Okay. Then, yung intermolecular forces, uh, tatlo lang naman yan, dipole-dipole, hydrogen bonding, dispersion, or the London dispersion forces. Pag dipole-dipole, yung positive end ng molecule that will be attracted to the negative end of the other molecule, they will form chains. No? So, dugtong-dugtong sila because of the partial charges. Okay? Okay, so yan. So, depending on the interaction that your organic molecule can perform, no? depending on their interaction na pwede gawin, magbabago yung kanilang strength ng intermolecular force. No? So looking here, we have isobutylene. So anong bonds meron dyan? Carbon, 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 hydrogen. So lahat ay non-polar. So this molecule is 
in itself nonpolar, so it will have weaker intermolecular forces. Compare that to acetone, we have a dipole bond here, the CO bond, dipolian. So it can perform dipole-dipole interaction, which is stronger, dipole-dipole or the London forces. Uh, sabi natin last time, dipole-dipole. No? So since ito ay dipole-dipole, that means it will have higher characteristics, no? higher boiling point and higher melting point compared to the London dispersion forces. Hydrogen bond, ito yung special type ng dipole-dipole that only exists between bonds with N, O, and F. No? Yung H bonded to N, O, F. No? So, ganun lang. And yun, may kita natin yung hydrogen bonding sa ating DNA. Our nucleotide bases, no? the ACGT, uh, they are bonded with the H bonds. No? Kaya naka-double helix ang ating DNA. No? So imagine without H bond, ano kaya itsura ng tao? Wala. No? Ito yung naman London, force, uh, London dispersion forces. Kapag wala kang dipole, edi eh London dispersion forces lang meron ka. No? So, yan. so depending on the size of your molecule for alkanes, no? yung alkanes, you discuss to, alam ko, Inyo siguro na. So, depending on the carbon chain length, tumataas yung London dispersion forces. As a result, tumataas yung boiling point or the melting point na. So, yan. So, for example, you have your butane, pentane, hexane. So, mas maraming carbons kay hexane compared to butane. So, this will exhibit more um, London dispersion forces than the butane. So, it will have higher boiling point, higher melting point than your butane. And depending on the branching, ano nangyari kapag nagbabranching? Uh, Na-discuss na rin to siguro sa lab. No? So, if you have branch alkanes, no, the surface area decreases as a result, bumababa yung intermolecular forces. No? So, pag lumiliit yung molecule because of the branching, nagiging circular siya. For example, ito, pas pabilog yan eh. Ito, pas zigzag yan eh. So, ito mahaba to, ito maliit lang. So, yun. As a result of the branching, lumiliit yung molecule, lumiliit yung surface area niya. So, bumababa yung dispersion forces sa kanya. Ngayon, solubility. Ano meaning lang yan? Kapag polar, polar yung hahaluan niya. Example would be suka and tubig, no? So, yung suka, it can form hydrogen bond. May OH doon. Tapos may C double bond O pa. So, that's polar. Ang um, water, polar yan. Hydrogen bond. So, mag yung tubig and suka. However, try mo yung tubig sa langis. No? So, yung tubig and langis, hindi sila mag no? So, yan. Yun din yung concept na ginagamit sa ating mga sabon-sabon. Uh, pag mga naguhugas kayo ng pinggan sa bahay, tulad ko, ito yung, ito yung chemistry behind that. No? So, kung mapapansin nyo yung oil molecule sa pagkain nyo, paano siya nawa-wash off? No? Our detergent looks like this. No? So, ito yung detergent natin. Uh, common detergent is the, the desyl sulfate. No? So, you have your sulfate group out there, then you have your dodecyl carbon group there, 12 carbons yun. Okay? So, what will happen is that meron kang polar end and the non-polar end. No? So, my polar tail, non-polar tail. Your non-polar tail will attach to your mantika, yung mga sebo-sebo. Diyan didikit yan kasi like dissolves like. No? So, non-polar dissolves non-polar. Ito namang polar group na to, this will be used for water to pull these molecules, no? yung mga non-polar molecules. For example, ito yung mantika mo sa inyong ano, plato. Pag nilagyan mo yan ng detergent, what will happen there is that the detergent molecules will surround that oil. So, papalibutan nyo yung oil. As a result, yung, ano, yung non-polar group, ito ay... Uh, kakabit dun sa oil molecules mo. Non-polar to, non-polar yung oil mo. So, magsasama sila. Exposing the polar end sa labas, which is the hydrophilic, 
So, ibig sabihin yan, kapag dumaan yung tubig dyan, may hila yung mantika from your plato. So, yan. So, pwede na kayo maging BS dishwasher. No? <laughs> Ayan. Every night, naguhugas ako ng pinggan. So, ito yung chemistry niya. No? So, ganun lang. And ito rin yung reason why we have to wash our hands. No? Especially during the times of COVID-19. Ang ating viruses, they are encapsulated with a non-polar coating. Yung lipid bilayer ng protein, yung sa capsule ng coronavirus that's non-polar, and that can be uh, trapped by this hydrophobic tail ng ating detergent. So, non-polar yung capsule ng virus, ng coronavirus. So, mangyari ko na rito yung COVID-19, papalibutan niya ng sabon, then mawawash off mo yan pag binuhusa mo na ng tubig yung kamay mo. So, that's why washing hands is important, especially during this time. So, in order to remove the virus no, out of your hand. No? So, yun. No? So, basically, what we did today is that we understood, uh, we checked on the understanding of the covalent bonding as presented by Gilbert Lewis. No? Then, inalim natin how atoms create bonds, no? using the idea of valence bond theory. So, ano meron sa valence bond theory? Yung, yung electrons, they come together in a constructive interference, hence forming a bond. No? And when atoms come together to form bonds, yung kanilang atomic orbitals, they create the molecular orbitals. No? So, nagsasama yung dalawang characteristics ng atoms to create a molecular orbital. Okay? So, ito yun. So, ayan, pag nagsasama yung dalawang atomic orbitals, ito at ayun, they form molecular orbitals. It could be either bonding or anti-bonding, constructive or destructive. No? If you want to create molecules, then you have to join them, automatic lower yung energy doon. If, uh, if you want to cut the bonds of that atoms, no, of that molecules, kailangan mag-provide ka ng energy for that reaction to happen. Kaya nga yung papel, sinisilaban para maputol yung bonds. So, you have to promote the electrons from bonding to the anti-bonding orbitals. Na. Tapos, inalam natin yung kay carbon, how come na apat yung bonds na kaya niya gawin, pero ang kanyang atomic orbital, may dalawang vacant electrons. Yung isa ay paired. Na. So, sinabi natin, carbon can hybridize its uh, electrons. Na. So, pwede siya magkaroon ng sp3 hybridized uh, atom, sp3 hybridized electrons, pwedeng sp2 hybridized electrons, at pwede ring sp hybridized electrons. No? So, depending on the hybridization of your atom, you can have different uh, characteristics such as bond length and bond energy. No? And depending also on the hybridization of your atom, you can have different geometries. No? Okay na yun. <laughs> the rest is just review of your gen chem. No? So, next meeting, um, for next meeting, we will discuss alcohols. No? Alcohols yung discuss natin. The properties of alcohols, their, ano, their properties and their naming, paano pinapangalanan yung alcohol. No? So, madidiscuss natin yung next meeting. Uh, however, uh, yun nga, sabi ko sa inyo kanina, uh, there, were, there was a petition filed by the, ano, the CSO uh, requesting for a week-long break no, from November 1 to November 7. Uh, in, if in case na mag yung petition na yun, so wala tayong meeting next week. Pero kung hindi mag yung petition na yun, so kita kids. No? So yun lang. So anyway, that marks the end of our chapter 6 discussion. Later today, yeah, upload ko na po yung two quizzes for this topic. So ano po yung two quizzes for this topic? Dalawang quiz dito eh. Okay. So the first part of the quiz will focus on the functional groups. No? The second part of the quiz will focus on dehybridization. No? Yung mga diniscuss natin kanina. Madali lang yun. Kayang-kaya nyo yun. Okay? 
Ayun lang. So, I have nothing to tell na. Okay. So, with that, no? So, thank you for attending the class, no? For those who are absent, no? Um, due to uh, reasons na dahil sa typhoon, etc. So, let them know na lang na nag-discuss tayo and the recording is always uploaded naman on YouTube. No? So, yeah. So, I'll see you around and have a blessed uh All Saints Day, no? So, All Saints Day, bahala na kayo kung ano gusto niya gawin niyo sa life, no? Basta stay safe lang always, no? And again, gamitin yung lesson sa org camp, maghugas ng kamay, so the coronavirus will be uh, washed away, no? So, yan. So, ingat and I'll see you around, no? Update na lang tayo sa CSO. So, ingat po. And bye-bye.